New Country KDY is 102.5 KKDY West Plains, Missouri. A free service of the Ozark Radio Network. Cowboys and cowgirls of all ages, it's time to saddle up. It's time for the Just for Kids Radio Roundup on 102.5 KDY and around the world at KKDY.com. Now from the Cascade Mountains in the west to the Great Smokies in the east, from the Great Lakes to the north to the Rio Grande in the south, let's hit the dusty trail on the Just for Kids Radio Roundup. Here's your host, Cowboy Rick in Arkansas Bev. Howdy, howdy, and welcome to this week's very special edition of Just for Kids Radio Roundup. Great moments in American history. I'm your host, Cowboy Rick, along with the lovely and talented Miss Arkansas Bev. And we're going to get into the story after a while about how you wound up in Arkansas, because you're actually from Wisconsin. I am. It's quite a story. What's that about? What is it about? I grew up in southeast Wisconsin, and when I was 23, a friend of mine and I decided we wanted to take a bicycle trip. So uh, a third friend had relatives in Gamalia, Arkansas. So uh, we thought that's where we're going to head to. So Jean and I left one hot August day in 1978 and uh, rode 19 days on our bicycles to uh, Gamalia, Arkansas. From basically Milwaukee. From Wisconsin. the Milwaukee area, yes. So you've always loved slow transportation. I love slow transportation. Perfect with the stagecoach then. And I'll tell you folks, we're really excited about the upcoming event. We're going to be talking about an upcoming stagecoach trip we're doing in May, leaving May the 22nd from the historic region in Ozark and Douglas counties, also going over into Taney County, and winding up eventually on the 27th in Gainesville, Missouri, one of the most scenic and historic communities and and towns that I have ever uh, got to be at. Uh, One of my favorite drives in America. And there's some great ones to Palo Duro to Grand Canyon. I love the drive on Scenic Highway 5 from Gainesville to Ava. And it's one that we've talked about every time we go up north or south on Highway 5, how pretty it is to the east, how pretty it is to the west. That's right. So I can't wait to actually stagecoach on those That's roads. exactly right. And some of you all may be wondering, stagecoaching, what's that about? Well, we're blessed to own an 1880 Overland stagecoach that has deep ties to the Ozarks. And a special guest with us today is going to help share how that came to be. And then, of course, it was the very first ride at Silver Dollar City in the 60s. We wound up being blessed with it and uh, decided to start an Overland stage line from Missouri to parts, uh, parts west. And we partner elementary school kids in Missouri and Arkansas with elementary school kids all across the great American West and deliver these precious little pen pal letters. So I think we're ready right now, Miss Bev, uh, to introduce our guest. And uh, we're going to move on with the program now. We've got some very special sponsors you're going to hear and be hearing about throughout this. We want to thank uh, the Animal Clinic of West Plains, Dr. Umanis, of course, who does the official care of all the stagecoach horses and our riding horses as well. Theodosia Marina, one of the great places to go visit in the Ozarks, sets on beautiful uh, Little Shoals Lake. And then also Cheney Monument there and i think they're based out of gainesville and you know historical records uh that's what that's what we're about so much with our radio shows and the stagecoach journey uh monuments sometimes we just think of them as as something that goes in a cemetery but they're actually uh can become very official records and heritage trails for people to follow and uh, so we thank all of them for being our sponsors special guests today uh, not in any particular order of importance or beauty, but I'm going to start out first with Miss Linda Harlan and a uh, special guest. She and her family have deep roots uh, in the Ozark County region, and we'll get into her story in just a little bit. Next to her, we have the lovely and mis- talented Miss Janet Tabor, who, uh, when you want to know a little bit more about Ozark and Southern Missouri, Northern Arkansas history, Janet Tabor is one of the great go-to people for that. She helps head up the Ozarks Historium there in Gainesville, one of my favorite Facebook sites of all of them going. And check that out. You'll enjoy that immensely. Next to her is a lady that uh, I've read a lot of her work and uh, got to enjoy her publications. She's a former editor 
of the the Ozark County Times, Miss Sue Ann Jones, is so nice to have with us. And then, Miss Bev, I'm going to let you introduce this next lady, if you would. <laughs> well, last but not least is Miss Paula Hurd Rose. Paula and I met over 40 years ago. We played softball together down in Mountain Home and in Gainesville. Paula's been a teacher and a coach over at Gainesville for these many years, and uh, happy to be back together again. Paula heads up the Hooten and Hollerin event yeah, at, at right. Gainesville, and uh, we'll touch on that uh, later on in the show. That's right. And actually, what's kind of neat about today, talk about history being made, um, this is the first time, Dev, that uh, yourself and Miss Paula have uh, got to see each other since probably on the ball field way back when well since the the pregnancies and the kids started coming and and, and life and moving and yeah. and, and life happened yes. that interferes with sliding into home base stuff. Yes, it did. just a little bit and we're also because we've got such a, a wonderful group of ladies and what a great representation of of some of that fortitude that built america uh we're going to be showcasing some other women in american history today and i've asked all of you ladies if you would, to share with us if you could go back in American history and uh, spend a day with anyone that you would like to. Uh, who do you find that maybe inspired you and in some of the qualities of them? And uh, actually, I'm just going to go right to left and we're going to start out. I'm going to ask Miss Paula Jones, Miss Sue Ann Jones, if she would share with us a little bit of your history, and we're going to start introducing you ladies in person right now. So good to have you on the show today. Thank you, Cowboy Rick. It's wonderful to be here. I'm a descendant of Peyton Cassie and Nancy Graham. They were married in what is now Ozark County in 1817. So my roots are really deep there. That's right. Now, Cassie Mills. Probably named for that family. Because that's an unusual name. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. And Janet and I both are descendants of Revolutionary War heroes oh, who my made their of way. The American with. Revolution. That's right. Um, so I do have deep roots here, and one of I'm in the family of um, Silas Claiborne Turnbow that you mentioned. Who are was you a journalist. Me? He was known as Uncle Clabe in my family, and my mom typed some of his manuscripts. So, are you kidding me? The, he is one of the people I love to read so much, and we're going to be name dropping throughout the show today of publications or sites or books that you can get that will really help explore not just the Ozark region of America, but the general consensus of one now on the cross America. So Silas Turnbow, he recorded hundreds mm -hmm. of original stories of the people and uh, that wildlife and the scenery of the Ozarks. He did. He loved to just talk to people and write down their stories. He had a dream of publishing them, um, but that never came about the way he wanted. And he actually died impoverished in yes. kind of hard situations. But his stories... We're talking about on. right now. That's right. That's, and so your mother helped... Type, uh huh. She. Um, that was the old hunt and pack. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. my mom was the high school typing okay. teacher, so she did not do hunt and pack. But uh, <laughs> she, we, in fact, we in the historium archives, we've just now uh, kind of relocated one of her um, mimeograph carbon copy copies that she typed up of the original manuscript. That is so neat. Now, for myself, when I read the Turnbow manuscripts and I go on there, if you're into uh, Civil War history. There's great segments, many firsthand stories that he recorded of, of participants in the Civil War. And you can really see the impact in Ozark, Douglas, and Taney County of the Civil War through there. It affected every life. It's kind of it? hard to read sometimes. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Just uh, just uh, open honesty mm -hmm. of them right there. But then also, if you're more into the hunting or what was the landscape like in those eras, the, the mid-1800s up. Uh, the Turnbow Manuscripts, again, the animals. I have always noticed in those that they had a common thread, and when it comes to the wildlife, they had problems with lion, bear, wolf, and rattlers. Mm -hmm. It was a common thread throughout that. Yeah. So, And they um, had no clue or idea that those kinds of things would be endangered someday know, here. So there was no thought of um, saving them or any need for conservation. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say I go to the Turnbow Man. Turnbow manuscripts via the Missouri State University archive. 
and you may have a better direction to go to for them? Online, that's the best resource. Mm -hmm. The library.org um, is the website where okay. they're found. And they are, the nice thing about them is that they are searchable there. And so if you are in particular looking for a mention of a family member, you can type that name in and it will bring you up every mention that Turnbow Nay made of your relative oh, or your wow. ancestor. So wow. very many, helpful. For someone who uh, was afraid the stories wouldn't get told and now look at how we're able to look at what he done. In the public domain. So they're yeah. accessible to all of us. Yes. Yeah, you don't have to sign up or pay a subscription or anything like that. Now, uh, before we move on, uh, Sue Ann, you were the editor of the Ozark County Times for many years. And I, I think, you know, for stage coaching, I always look at Waterman Ormsby. He was a writer for the newspaper, the Boston Globe, I think it was, way back in the 1850s. And he was the first through passenger on the Butterfield Overland stage that started in Tipton, Missouri, and ended in San Francisco, California. Mm. So newspapers have always been such an important part. How did you become involved in the newspaper business? My, when um, when I was in high school, my mom was the high school a typing teacher, as I said, and one day I was with my mom and my dad, who was also a teacher at the school, uh, when they were getting ready for the, the school year to begin, and the phone rang, and Ruby Robbins, who was publisher and owner of the Ozark yes. County Times, was asking if uh, my parents parents knew anybody who could help with part-time typing and my mom said well Ann is here and she can type and so I was delivered to the Ozark County Times <laughs> that day and that was in 1967. Oh my goodness yeah. that is so neat and when was the paper first published in Ozark the Ozark County Times? It its roots began in 1881 in a newspaper that was acquired and acquired and acquired and um Linda's grandfather-in-law, Johnny Harlan, at one time owned it and named it the Ozark County Times, as yeah. I remember. 1881. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Billy the Kid uh, was going. Wyatt Earp was okay. going at that time. Jesse uh, James? Jesse and Frank James and all of them. Yeah. Well, at that time, the newspaper would be filled with these stories from off, from somewhere else, with small little columns of local news so they might well have been about mentioned yeah. in those are, are those old newspapers archived do you guys have a system that they could some of the earlier newspapers i see you i i see uh, <laughs> janet nodding her head the missouri historical society has them and the historium has um pdfs of okay. most of those issues that are available at the historium on the computers there they're not searchable Yes, but so, so go to the historium. Yeah, go to uh, the historium. Needs to be needs to be on everybody's bucket list. And we're going to be talking. I know you all are associated with different organizations there. Uh, when we, we get to Janet, I want to hear more about the historium and how it started and who started the historium there. But to me, it is the place to go to to learn more about history in that region. So I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a commercial break. We're going to pick it up right uh, thereafter, uh, we hear a word from these sponsors. And once again, thank you, ladies, so much for this special edition of the Just for Kids Radio Roundup and Great Moments in American History with Cowboy Rick and Arkansas Beth. We'll be right back. The Animal Clinic of West Plains, the Big Red Barn. <laughs> Have you noticed this winter that your older pets are moving a bit slower? <laughs> Do they seem to be more stiff as they get up to move around? Cold weather can affect senior pets. Schedule your dog's wellness checkup with the Animal Clinic of West Plains. Get your pet at their best this winter. They have lots of options for all budgets. The Animal Clinic of West Plains, the Big Red Barn. <laughs> Cheney Monument, located on Highway 160 in Gainesville, has been in business since 1935. They can make all types of memorials for cemeteries, such as custom monuments, cemetery lettering, and signs. They also do sandblasting. They're now taking orders for monuments, signs, and sandblasting. Visit them at www.cheneymonument.com or call 679-3720 to place your order. Or stop in. They're open Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 and Saturday from 6 till noon. 
It's a new year, and now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota compact tractors rated number one for reliability and known for easy operation in the under 100 horsepower category. Right now, put zero down and get zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $1,100. Now through February 28th, see us or go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Hi, this is Charlene Smith. Remember, we are two names you can trust, Edgler and Harper and Kubota, Mountain Grove and West Plains. And now more of the Just for Kids Radio Roundup on 102.5 KDY. Let's rejoin your host, Cowboy Rick, at Arkansas Bev. Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to the second segment of this week's very special Just for Kids Radio Roundup, Great Moments in American History with Cowboy Rick and Arkansas Bev. And a special lineup that we have today. It's just, uh, I'm honored to get to have them here, Miss Bev. Oh, we've had a fun time already. We've had a fun time already, and, and then just to get to see you and Paula. After so many years of knocking the old football around the diamond. Knocking the softball, uh, softball out, of the, out of the park. Out of the park. Yeah. You said Paula was a player now. Paula was a player now. She could she could hit the ball. She could stop it, catch it. That's She's neat. just always such a good athlete. You know, one of the neat things about American history, folks, and it, it's vital. And you all know this because Jens are, Jens are on the front lines of doing it. But keeping these stories alive. Telling the history, uh, you said, Aaron, you tell about some of your ladies or daughters of the American Revolution and of Turnbow and of different ones. If we don't, you know how proud we are of that. And maybe when we were younger, it didn't mean as much to us. But therefore, by us recording and capturing this, as we're doing right now, the generations to follow us, our kids and grandkids and great grandkids uh, will be able to appreciate that. And I believe with all my heart that they've been special people put in American history that's helped to record and preserve these things because uh, it isn't just about America. God set America up and let it become the most iconic uh, light, I think, in the world. And uh, saving this history, how we got to where we're at, the trials, the tribulations, the, the different kind of toughness that our forefathers and mothers have is amazing, isn't it? Now, and then we're going to go on to Miss Janet Tabor, but Sue Ann, if you could go back in American history and spend that day with someone, who would it be, did you say? Well, I'm a big fan of Laura Ingalls Wilder oh, wow. because, of course, I love stories. Yes, yes. And my, I have two granddaughters now who are on opposite coast, east coast and west coast, and they love Laura's stories. How old are they? They are eight and ten. Oh, mm. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just the age that Laura was when her stories were happening. Um, so I would, I would love to be with her there in Mansfield, yes. maybe at her house when yes. she's thinking about writing those stories. Stories yeah. from her early days. Yeah, and the Missouri Ruralist is the first one to start publishing. Oh, that's right. I had sharing her that. stories. Yes. Right. My Aunt Rita Watterson, she was Rita Hamby, uh, knew Laura. Oh. You know, I think Laura lived until the late 40s or 1950s. 50s. Something like that, early 50s. <laughs> yeah, and my my Aunt Rita used to tell of, of bumping onto Laura up on the square at the bank at, at uh, Mansfield. And it's a little bitty thing she was. Of course, my aunt was very short, too. But, uh, yeah, so it was neat to have that connection. Mm. And her roots are deep in the Ozarks, uh, Laura Ingalls, for sure. What's her qualities about her that you admire? Well, she she could make a story out of the the simplest things just the details in everyday life i know she could tell a story so simply one of the things that my granddaughters cry about is when the dog i think his name is jack yep when yes. he when he died both yep. of them we're reading that together, and I look over, and the tears are running down their little cheeks. And I think, oh, she told the story so simply. Now I can't even remember the details of how it went. But, but great life's lessons yeah. in that. Good for you. Yeah. Sitting next to you is one of my favorite people. To Mine, get, too. I know. I can just tell she has a, her own fan club. Oh uh, uh, and I don't know that much about her roots. So I'm gonna. It's this is gonna be kind of fun, Miss Beth, to learn more about Miss Janet Tabor. The Tabor name is very well known in that region of the Ozarks, and and I always think of respect and hard work and diligence when I hear the Tabor name. 
and that that's fun to be associated with that. Well, so, and also Janet's maiden name, Ebright. Ebright. Is very well known. I, that was my next question because I didn't know for sure what your maiden name was. Miss Janet, so good to have you on the show. Well, today. thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I've got to hang out with you at the Historium on different presentations that you folks do over there and uh, a little bit of your background and your history, ma'am. My roots are deep in Ozark County on both sides of my family, and so I am proud to represent Ozark County anywhere I go in yeah. in the United States. And um, traveling all over, it's always good to come home and yeah. to claim this place as, as home. Yeah. Best place in the world to live. Okay. For what reasons? Um, the, the heritage... Part yes. is part of it, and the landscape, the beauty of the Ozarks, the quality of the people here. Yeah. We are yeah. always um, come home feeling like we just know the best people. Our neighbors are the best neighbors, and our yeah. our country is the best country, this, this yeah. place that we call home. Um, I'm here to represent the Ozark County Historium. Yes. <laughs> which is the home of the Ozark County Genealogical and Historical Society. Okay. And I became involved with that organization because of my interest in my roots and my heritage here in Ozark County. And our goal um, at the Ozark County Historium, which is um, actually a storefront on the square in downtown right. Gainesville yes. in a historic old building from the 1920s. We've renovated it and we filled it up with our historical records and yeah. that sort of thing. But our goal is to collect and preserve and then to share yeah. what we find out about Ozark County and the surrounding Ozarks, not just the county, but I love the what surrounding you said, area. To share. We are very interested in sharing with anyone. And a lot of our supporters are people who don't have roots in the Ozarks, but they may have moved here from somewhere else. And they have learned to love this place just like those of us who are natives. Yes, do. one of the people that come to my mind is Wayne Sales. He's going Absolutely. to be a guest in a few weeks. Not rooted in the Ozarks, but is one of the best historians of that region, isn't he? He appreciates what he has found here yeah. since he and his wife Doris moved here yeah. quite a few years ago. So, you grew up? I grew up in Gainesville, and... Um, Probably seventh generation uh, oh on goodness. some of my family lines. Yes, yes. My dad is buried in a cemetery in Ozark County where we have six generations buried that there. That is so, so neat. Um, it's, it's deep and it's meaningful to me, yeah. and I appreciate it. You know, Miss Bev and I was driving into town today in a little community cemetery there where we live. Amy, it was an old post office, and and route there in the old days there's a cemetery there and there was two young girls maybe in their mid-teens uh, we didn't see any vehicle they probably live in a house close by there or visiting and they were going out into the cemetery looking at headstones and uh, there again the record of them on this next stagecoach trip that we're doing uh, that's going to start in May the Ozark Mountains Heritage Trails we're actually going to be passing a lot of those old rural cemeteries and those become a ledger they absolutely are they are a record and when people first come to be interested in finding out about their family history often that's the first thing they will start with is a record of a birth yeah. and a death yeah. and often those are recorded on a yeah. monument you mentioned cheney monument yes and Rob has been, uh, Rob Collins, who owns that business, okay. has been really instrumental in preserving a lot of the old See, that's uh, places. He uh, One of the older cemeteries in Ozark County is Sweet and Pond Cemetery. I've heard of it. And they, yes. it's near Dora. Dora. And they uh, were hired to come in there and clean off all the gravestones. If you've been in an old cemetery, you know that a lot of them are in, the yes. gravestones are in yes. disrepair, yes. they've been broken, they're falling down, they're covered with moss and lichen, and and they are sometimes illegible. But something he can do is come in and clean those up and re-support uh, them underneath and yeah. make them so they'll last yeah, another hundred see, or two hundred yeah, years. And then you, so. you go to some of the old cemeteries in the Ozarks, and it's that way across America, but... Uh, where there may just be a stone with nothing carved. They didn't have access to a monument company Correct. or to that. 
Uh, one comes to mind of mine up by the Smollett uh, community there between Gainesville and Ava on the Old Salt Trail we'll be talking more about. But is the Spring Creek Cemetery mm -hmm. right there. And that was right in my, my family's area as well. And a great old story that I grew up from my grandfather, who was born in 1891. There is uh, the story of uh, a rider that rode with Jesse and Frank James. His name was Fount Gideon. And he's buried in the Spring Creek. And, and Miss Bev and I went there. The stone is not carved, but we know the general location. And we found the blank stones that's placed mm -hmm. there. So uh, thank goodness that there is records like that. The Historium, how accessible is that to people and how user-friendly? It's, um, I hope, very user-friendly. Yeah, it I, is. I hope that it is. We try to make it that way. We have um, events and we have displays and exhibits and uh, that welcome people to come in and look and see what we have. And, and we also will help somebody get started on learning about their family history yeah. who have roots in Ozark County. Yeah. And we have uh, and a program coming up in about two months by Vince Anderson, who is going to give a Genealogy 101 class. Oh, and wow. you can, if you're new to genealogy or finding out about your family history, you can come in and learn where to start and how to record it and preserve it. And that is a, that would be neat to set in. Now, you've also got another special guest. You guys have special guests come in and do presentations and we do. quite regular. We do. The Historium is not a museum where you just come in and see static displays, right. but we try to have something different regularly. COVID has been a detriment to that yes. for sure for the last two years, but we are really eager to get going up yes. and going again, and we do have some plans coming up on January the 27th. We're going to have uh, Dr. Brooks Blevins, who's the head yeah. of the Ozarks Studies Department at Missouri State University. Yes. He's a native Oz Ozarker himself. Yeah. He's a great speaker. He's entertaining. He's informative. He knows a lot about the history of the Ozarks. He's written a three-part set of books that are basically textbook studies of, yeah. of the history of the Ozarks. Well, I know we're coming to that We'll be glad meeting. to have you. Yes. And, and everything that we do is free and open to the public. Right. You ask about accessibility. We're handicapped accessible. Yeah. And we uh, welcome anybody to come and join us when we're yeah. having something. The Ozark County Times has been our best uh, advertising friend. Yeah. Yes. And if we're going to have something, it's always written up in the newspaper. We also have an Ozark County Historium Facebook page. I'm such a fan. And that, of that is where you can find out what's going on too, as well as just we just constantly share your, things. Your on coworker here. there that uh, that is always sharing the uh, Mary Sparks, yes. who is Sue Ann's sister. Oh my um, goodness! She was the editor of our newsletter, The Old Mill Run, until recently. We also have a website, Ozarks Ozark County History dot org. Ozark County History dot org, and that we have updates on there, plus other things that you might be interested in. Yeah, so yeah. we oh, welcome anybody to the Ozark County Historium. Is, young and old. Oh yes, yeah. And you're I've seen kids of all ages, which we're just big kids, I think, by the way. <laughs> hey listen, uh we're gonna go back to our sponsors right now, hear another word from them. We're gonna pick this conversation up right where we left off. So uh, remember keep it western and we'll be right back. Don't miss the inventory clearance sale going on now at r and Tire Express. All in-stock wheels and tires must go. Must go. That's right. r and is slashing prices to make room for the new 2022 inventory. With wheels starting at just $22 a week. Yep, just $22 a week. Plus, save huge on tires and wheel and tire packages. r and is rolling in the new year with deals you don't want to miss. And that's not all. At r and you have options like low weekly or monthly payments with six months same as cash and no credit check because everyone's approved. So don't wait. Save huge today with wheels starting at just $22 a week during the inventory clearance sale going on now at r and Tire Express in West Plains on Porter Wagner Boulevard or give us a call at 417-255-TIRE. For a quick quote, text TIRES to 77000. 
Why become a Missouri State Trooper? Competitive salary starting the first day at the academy. Full benefits. A career that can take flight. The opportunity to protect your community and to know that you save lives. Why become a Missouri State Trooper? To make every day count. Do you have what it takes? Apply online at moldtrooper.com or contact a local recruiter at 1-800-796-7000. The Missouri State Highway Patrol is an equal opportunity employer. Howdy, howdy, and thanks for sticking around to the third segment of this week's very, very special Just for Kids Radio Roundup and Great Moments in American History, celebrating the history of America, celebrating uh, God's love and and, uh, oversight over all of these generations here and celebrating the history of the Ozarks, Miss Bev, our next stagecoach journey coming up, Ozark Mountains Heritage Trails. I cannot wait. We've got our mail bags. We're going to be filling them up uh, with these precious little pen pal letters from kids. From We know we got some coming from St. Joe, Missouri letters. We got some from uh, Texas. We've got some uh, from the different schools in this region, all coming to Ozark County. We've got a school teacher here with us that we're going to be talking about that a little bit with and helping us do that. But uh, before we went to break, Ms. Bev, uh, Janet was just mentioning, hitting on something that is is really important. Uh, how when families used to live closer together, how our heritage and our genealogy and stuff was shared around the tables of an evening and a cup of coffee or out on the front porch. But with the more scattered and diverse lifestyles now, it's not as accessible uh, through first-hand knowledge. So it surprises me whenever somebody comes to the historium or contacts us through the website or through the Facebook page wanting to know where their grandmother's buried. Yeah. And we are so happy to be able to point people. I had that happen just this week. Uh, a man from Washington State was wanting to find where his grandmother was buried and if we could find an obituary for her. And we did through the Ozark Isn't County Times something? archives that we have at the Historium. So we welcome that sort of inquiry. Yeah. We're happy to help. I know how meaningful it would be to me to be able to get an answer to a question like that. I've been on the road looking it, for graves back then. Of course, and it would answer, why do I look the way I look? Or why do I have these passions the way I have them in certain areas or, or like things? Or even over into the medical side of it too you can find out through history so much uh we celebrate the old trails that went west the santa fe the central overland the butterfield overland the oregon trail my people came uh, from kentucky and georgia and tennessee and that's very typical of the ozarks that's but, that's more common than not yes and you know bev and i have talked about this before if you will look at where your your uh great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents grew up, whether it was mountainous or plateau. Bev's people, a lot of them are from Germany and that region over there. They moved, they migrated to areas of likeness. Yes. And uh, the the mountains of Tennessee and Georgia and Kentucky are so similar to the Ozarks. I always thought that's why they came there. Bev's people moved to a more of a colder climate uh, of in Wisconsin. And, uh, but when those people who came through the Cumberland Gap or on through the Appalachians came, they got crowded out there in in Kentucky or Tennessee yes. or North Georgia. Yes, wanted to find more space. When they hit the Ozarks, they felt yep. at home. Yep. It was familiar to them and yep. comfortable to them. And a lot of well, those are our ancestors. Perfect who stayed example. Here. One of my favorite people in the world to study about is Daniel Boone. I'm a big fan of Daniel Boone. Of course, we, we always con- associate him with Kentucky. Uh, but as a matter of fact, the last 20 years of his life, he lived in Missouri. In uh, 1799, Daniel Boone and his wife, Rebecca, and their kids made a 60-foot dugout canoe, put it in the Ohio River, came down the Ohio River as a family to the Mississippi, up the Mississippi uh, at that time, and then the, up the Missouri River to where Defiance is now. And he said that one of the reasons was if he could see smoke from another chimney where he lived, he felt so, encroached upon. No, it was crowded. <laughs> yeah, now, I wonder if Rebecca felt the same way. <laughs> you know, she's one of the people I love to read about in her 
steadfastness. Those women who were the wives um, often don't make the stories. They don't make the books. They didn't write the books necessarily. But my person that I wanted to talk about that I would spend a day with is Eleanor Pruitt Stewart. You will not have heard of her, but she was um, a woman who wound up in the West as a homesteader herself. She proved up a homestead. And there were a lot of women who did that. They just didn't get the recognition because of the role of women in that time. They, well, for one thing, they were too busy. But this particular woman wrote letters, and they were saved by the lady that she wrote them to, published into a book, and her adventures and her um, escapades. And she was a young mother and a widow. From a woman's point of view. From a woman's point of view. Yeah. But what I like the most about Eleanor, and there are several of this type book, Letters of Women Homesteaders, Women of the West, Women Writing the West. Uh, The thing I like most about Eleanor Stewart is that she had a wonderful attitude. She was positive. She saw... The beauty in a life that most would consider nothing but hardship. Yes. She enjoyed it. She made the most of it. And so if anybody wants to read a true story about how life was for a woman homesteader, Letters of a Woman Homesteader by Eleanor Pruitt Stewart. And I see N.C. Wyeth did the illustrations, and he's one of the best artists. That tells you the quality of what her life was like. But it's amazing. You, You spoke of... Her attitude. And I remember as a kid growing up, Miss Beth, your attitude determines your altitude. It just also determines your happiness in life. You know, uh, there's so many examples and illustrations. That's a great one. I encourage everyone uh, to check that out on that. The Storium is playing an active role in the Ozark Mountains Heritage Trail trails uh, on the upcoming stagecoach trip. We've got to have an ending point. An ending point is Gainesville, Missouri, but Gainesville is sprawls out in this beautiful valley. So uh, we'll be letting you ladies determine where the coach runs in to make its final mail drop that day. But I have a feeling the historian will be, it'll be right around in that area on the We will welcome you. Yeah, great, great. (laughs) Now next to you is a lady I've been so looking forward to having on the show. Uh, Miss Linda Harlan, uh, when you think of... uh, of kindness and goodness and diligence and hard work and and uh, honesty, I, I think of uh, of your family and what all you've done and the impact in that community and that region and and uh, it's so good to have you on the show. I want to just let people know that I have a special reason for being so uh, fond of the Harlands and that because the banking industry, which has been you all's profession mostly, uh, your father-in-law, I believe it was, was the one who made the loan to Jack and Pete Hershen of Silver Dollar City to open up this new park that was going to entertain the guests while they waited for their time to go into the cave, Marvel Cave, and they came up with the idea of creating a place called Silver Dollar City. The first two rides that they had to purchase One was a stagecoach, and the other one was a historic old steam train that had belonged to Henry Ford. You folks loaned them the money to go purchase that and bring it here in about 1960, isn't it? So good to have Miss Linda Harlan on the show today. Thank you very much. And very pleased to be here. Yeah, and, and what an impact. There's nobody listening out there right now that has probably not been to Silver Dollar City or been impacted by some of of what they've done and you guys are at the very core beginning roots of that and I just it truly gives me goosebumps and now the stagecoach that uh, I've seen the loan papers from 1960 the Hershen showed them to me that you guys made on that and now it's coming back to Gainesville what's what's that feel like to you Linda oh that's awesome I mean I I didn't realize that story I didn't know about it really and um uh, I, I think uh, that's really great to have it have the stagecoach come back and and uh, especially to our area. It's yeah. really how how did your roots how how deep are your roots in Ozark County? Well, my roots are in Houston, Missouri. That's where I grew up and graduated from high school. Oh, and your band teacher, music teacher, was who up there? My father was 
Your was father? Was a music teacher, yes. And his he, name was? Lowell Fleener, and he was a violinist. So we had an orchestra in, in, uh, in the high school at that time. Um, my background on my mother's side of the family, my grandmother came from Switzerland and my grandfather from Germany, and they came through Ellis Island and oh, yes, are listed yes, there. Yes. But when I went to college at MSU, uh, it was SMS at the time, I met John Harlan. Okay. And uh, yeah. we um, liked each other a lot. Yes. And we got engaged and we got married. Yes. And so, uh, but John's roots are, of course, in Gainesville. And his um, grandfather uh, was president of the bank that we that the Harlan brothers started, and there were seven Harlan brothers, uh, in 1894. And so 1894, was, there yes. were seven Harlan brothers, uh -huh. okay. And they did different things, and a lot of them were in, some in West Plains, some in Gainesville. Yes. But, um, and then John's father was the president, and then John and now our son yeah. Chris. Yes. So um, that's... Uh, the roots in Ozark County is John Harlan. Yeah, and husband. you said your father was a violinist. Yes. Or was that in the Ozarks it would be called a fiddlist? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 they're fiddlers, but yeah. he was a classical uh, and jazz violinist. That is so um, neat. And so uh, you have a deep love, I'm sure, for music. My favorite thing. That is, that that is my right? passion, yes. Yeah, uh, singing, playing instruments, piano, what do you do? I I'll, sing and play the piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I always say I was cut out to be a singer. They just sewed me together wrong. Oh. You <laughs> can't carry a tune in a bucket. But, uh, but that is... But you can listen. But you know, I can music. listen. And here's one of the things we're excited about, Miss Linda, with you having this love for music. And there again, we talk about our heritage and our history. There's not a bigger indicator of that than music. The kind of music that we live, the kind of music that comes from areas. Our, uh, a lot of the Ozark music, of course, is the Appalachian, the Cumberland. And, uh, and that region. We've got some special nights of music on the Ozark Mountains Heritage Trails that we're doing at the Stagecoach Journey. Uh, two different nights of it out on the trail in Ozark County. So, oh, that'll be great. Yes, we have, uh, there's a gentleman that is helping to head that up. His name is Jack John, John Jackson. Jackson. John Jackson. He is affiliated with uh, Larry's Diner on RFD. This showcases so much great of the Ozark and our heritage music. He has agreed to head up, and H.K. Galding is actually going to help with this as well. And we've got two nights that we're going to be having a special celebration of Ozark folk music. And they, uh, they're bringing in these special entertainment groups. And uh, one of them, I think, is going to be at the Caney Overlook on Glade Top Trail. I think the other one is going to be, we've gotten permission to camp in, in the little meadow bottom right at Hammond Mill. A lot of times in this region we think of Hammond Mill, we think of the old CC camp out here on 14, but that is not the one. This is the original Hammond Mill over on, uh, what creek is that? Little North Fork. Little North Fork, yeah, before it runs into Theodosia. And uh, the historic old mill is standing there, one of the most scenic little valleys there. We're having special music there. Uh, and so you may have to sit in and, and uh, be part of that. Well, I, I will certainly try to be there. <laughs> yeah, of course you will. And we're going to pick up more with Miss Linda here in just a minute uh, when we get ready for the next segment of this very special just for kids radio roundup great moments in american history miss bev i couldn't be having a better day i agree i'm just telling you this is I awesome agree. so stick around folks you don't want to miss a minute of it we'll be right back the animal clinic of west plains the big red barn <laughs> have you noticed this winter that your older pets are moving a bit slower <laughs> do they seem to be more stiff as they get up to move around <laughs> cold weather can affect senior pets <laughs> Schedule your dog's wellness checkup with the Animal Clinic of West Plains. Get your pet at their best this winter. They have lots of options for all budgets. The Animal Clinic of West Plains, the Big Red Barn. Cheney Monument, located on Highway 160 in Gainesville, has been in business since 1935. They can make all types of memorials for cemeteries, such as custom monuments, cemetery lettering, and signs. They also do sandblasting. They're now taking orders for monuments, signs, and sandblasting. Visit them at www.chaneymonument.com or call 679-3720 to place your order. Or stop in. They're open Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 and Saturday from 6 till noon. 
Howdy, howdy, and thanks for sticking around to the fourth, can you believe that, Miss Beth? The fourth and final segment for the fastest hour in the American West. Uh, the great moments in American history just for Kids Radio Roundup. Special guest in here, Miss uh, Miss uh, Linda Harlan, we're visiting with right now about some of her roots. The history, they're tied to Ozark County and the stagecoach. Miss Linda, I, uh, I want to ask you, who in American history, other than just maybe your mother, grandmothers, and them, but who would you like to have spent a day with in American history that impacted, made a difference? Well, I was thinking about Louisa May Alcott. Oh. I loved Little Women, and I, when I was just reading a little about her, I found that she really wasn't going to write the book, but she had to do it out of necessity to support her family. To oh, is help that her right? Family. Mm-hmm. But um, she, it, of course, it was a huge success. Right. And um, she, uh, uh, her Louisa May Alcott. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, Louisa May Alcott. And what era was she? She lived uh, 1832 to 1888. Wow, did she see some changes? And she uh, was a Civil War nurse, and she um, led uh, the charge in support of anti slavery and uh, temperance and women's rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, of yeah. course, she wrote many books, but Little Women had such an impact on a lot of people and a lot of young people. The characters were so, they just came to life. They were but, wonderful. But don't you think that those characters and those stories would be just as impactful to kids nowadays as they would were back then to us when oh, we I were do. younger? Yes. And I think it's really important. You know, there's a lot of great school, school teachers. We've got Miss Paula with us that I guarantee is a great school teacher. Ones out there, they can open up some windows right there. A lot of homeschool co-ops and different things right now. That's a great reading direction to go with. And there's a lot of life's lessons in those that you're talking about with her. My uh, granddaughter, Faith, was in uh, a play of Little Women in Mountain Home, Arkansas, at Twin Lakes Theater down there. And she got to play the part of Beth. But that, uh, of course, I saw it every yes. performance. Yes. So, uh, you know, it really... <laughs> Became very meaningful yep. to you me to see her it. play the part. But that's that. neat to encourage some of the grown-ups out there right now to look into this if you're looking to intrigue mm-hmm. or spark an interest in in uh, some of these people. My mother always said, you know, I've asked her before, what would you have wanted to have been when you if you lived in, say, the 1870s? And uh, everyone has a different answer. But sometimes, like you said, I think Miss Janet said earlier, sometimes... The, the men's names become more predominantly associated with events. But my mom always has a say. My mother's 83 now and just an incredible role model. She said, remember, son, your father's the head of the house, but I'm the neck that turns the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You're all nodding to that. Yeah. Right but uh, so I really like that. that I, I hang on to that. Women has been uh, we wouldn't have this great country. If it wasn't for the fortitude, I don't know how you do it. I, I do not. I do not. And I know Jens are all glad you're women, and I'm glad I'm a man. <laughs> but uh, it would have been tough, wouldn't it? Yeah. And without oh, having yes. the amenities mm-hmm. that we have right now. And I think the medical thing so much. You mentioned uh, her being a Civil War nurse. That's Bev being an RN. Uh, the medicine's come so far. The, the hardships, the heartaches. Mm-hmm. But yet, you... Someone mentioned earlier they could keep a positive attitude, mm-hmm. and that was that's a key thing. I want to go next to our lady sitting beside Miss Bev, one of your longtime dear friends, Miss Bev, uh, Miss Paula Heard Rose. And Paula, you are a school teacher. Yes, I actually was a elementary PE teacher and a high school coach for several years, thirty years. Actually retired, <laughs> and just the last couple of weeks, I am now working back at school. So, well, good yeah. for you. Well, you know what? A benefit to the kids. I can promise you that. <laughs> Having that kind of, of teacher uh, to instill such those early days of developing who someone is. Yeah. What is it you love about teaching? Well, I just love little kids. And, and I always said I had the best job when I had the elementary PE. I thought I had the best job in the whole school system because yes. little kids are always raring to go. They come in with the, you know... It wouldn't matter what you said. They are they are wanting yeah. to do it, and they're excited about it, and they yeah. love every minute of it. You know, so I'm, I I kind of got lucky because I had the uh, 
you know, I think a subject that most of them liked to begin oh, with. So absolutely. It really wouldn't matter how good a teacher yeah. I was. I think I would have been in a good Okay, situation. and we talk a lot at the stagecoach journey. We talk about transportation, communication, and uh, history, of course, communicating. We talk about uh, with Ms. Jones over the times and how important the newspapers and her record there. Uh, you know, we focus a lot on since the start of the stagecoach journey on pen pal letters, uh, getting kids to write pen pal letters. Miss Miss Harlan, I've got to tell you this: every letter that Miss Bev and I, and we're always so thankful when we get a letter from Pete or Jack Hershon or uh, or their missus, uh, they're handwritten. They're handwritten, every single one of them that they send us. And the pen pal letters that we get to deliver, we do require them to all be handwritten. Yeah, that's And uh, it's been, we've been doing this for, for 20 plus years now, the pen pal. We're excited. You're helping us with the pen pal uh, classes that are going right. to be getting the mail. Right. So uh, what's your thoughts on this? And I think uh, I think it's great because it's kind of a lost art anymore. Everybody has their computers and yes. their tablets and all that sort of thing. And so the kids don't do as much writing. On, yeah. you know a normal day so I think it's good that they're going to actually write them it's more of a personal touch and uh, you know it's also you know thinking back at the olden days that's the only way they communicated so I think that it'll be really fun to them it'll be yeah. something new and different yeah. to get you know get to see the stagecoach get to see yes. their letters went somewhere yes. Yes. on a stagecoach yes. and you know that sort of thing it's going to be really exciting for them we've been we just uh, the stagecoach trip we did last year in West Texas, we delivered mail to the children of children that we used to deliver mail to yes. years ago. <laughs> so kind of a family thing on yeah. that right there. Uh, you're ahead of the signature event in Gainesville, Missouri, in Ozark County, uh, one that is legendary. Uh, so many great things uh, that people can experience at the hooting and hollering. Yes. And tell us a little bit about that and, and what you love about hooting and hollering, your signature event. Okay, well, first of all, I just want to say that it is always held on the third Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of September every year. Third Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of September. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark it down. Yes, and that uh, we've been doing it since like 1961, which happens to be a really good year because that's the year I was born. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I may have been at the first one, but I'm not sure. But anyway. Uh, that's about the same time Harlan's loaned money to the Hershans right. to buy the stagecoach. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it was some good, good things happening back then. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's been going on for many, many years before I became uh, affiliated with it in any way, but I always attended as a kid and yeah. loved it. My parents were really into square dancing. My, yeah. Both my parents yes. were our retired teachers. They loved, you know... Oh, they are both retired teachers. Yes. Neat. And uh, my actually, my uncle, H.K. Sylvie, uh, was a fiddler. He was he was a fiddler who many, I know many that years. name, yes. And he's actually taught um, lessons in, in, like, Columbia at the Missouri University. Yes. He's been to Washington D.C. because of his fiddling. He's, you know, he's pretty well known. Wow, so that anyway, was neat. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the dancing and all that. Yes. Uh, I was a part of that. The costume parades, the parade. I loved the pageant. My mom sewed many dresses through the years. Oh for my those goodness! Girls. I mean, so I was always very involved. With yeah. It, but uh, in that way. But now, as an adult, uh, the last few years I've been in charge of the bed and outhouse races and. Um, then I got on the committee, and then it evolved into Nancy Walker, who's done it for many, many years. Yes, She's yes. been in charge of, of pretty much like the chairman of the committee. She had been after me for a while about taking over for her. So yeah. this coming year is my first year to be, I guess, uh, flying on my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in well, training I, up it, now. It's in great hands. I can promise well, you that. Well, I hope so. But I did want to mention uh, real fast some of the things that we do Absolutely. have Absolutely. You um, bet. Uh, along with the square dancing, we do that every night from like 9 to midnight. Um, and the platforms are full. And when I was in high school back in the 70s, uh, you can, I, I think there might have been three of us that danced with our dads. And that was yes. very uncool at, at the time. <laughs> now it's it's uh, probably 75% or more of the people out there are the high school and college age kids. Dancing. And, and, that and is they neat. love it. And I Good. think that's wonderful because I was really afraid it was going to die out. Sure, sure, so, sure. And we have young fiddlers now. Yes. And and so it's really a good thing to see. Um, we also have a quilt show. We have a queen pageant where they dress in the and yeah. pioneer yeah. attire. Yeah. Oh and, yes, and, yes. And they do speeches and so on. We have free kids games throughout the three days. We have a costume parade where they 
you know, they wear, wear that period, you know, the Pioneer right, uh, clothing. Right. And that's mostly kids that are involved in that. We have outhouse and bed races, as I mentioned earlier, which are pretty entertaining. Yes. You yeah. know, we try to make those oh, fun. Sure. Uh, we have a 5K race. We have shotgun and archery shoot. We have a pet, wow. a pet show. We have horseshoe pitching contest, a pie contest. Uh, of course, we have the big parade on Saturday with the right. floats and, you know, the cars yeah. and the bands and so on. And uh, we also have um, little girl pit princess pageants, like different age groups of those. And we also have um, calling contests, which is kind of fun. You know, I have hog calling, like, husband calling even, you know. So that's like the best husband calling. Honey, supper's ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah. that is so neat. Well, I, I just have to tell you, for all, all of the work that, that you all do for the communities, and it's that way across America, it's people that are dedicated like you all. Yeah. that preserve our history, that preserve these stories, that keep it fun and alive. And and I really do mean this from the bottom of my heart. I think Gainesville, Missouri, it's, it's a Mayberry. It's stepping back into a great time, a great era, and you guys have kept that little time capsule there. And uh, there again, the scenic drive. From Gainesville to Ava on Highway 5, our next stagecoach journey uh, is going to be uh, just west of Highway 5, uh, starting back on the Glade Top Trail and the Old Salt Road. We're going to hear more about that in the upcoming shows. Uh, if you could go back in American history and spend a day with someone, who would it be? Um, I think it would be Harriet Tubman. Oh, the Underground Railroad. Yes, uh, yes, she was back in the 1800s, and um, I actually did some reading uh, just this morning, just to kind of you know get sure. more familiar. Cause I, I've watched movies and things yes. like that, but yes, Harriet uh, Tubman. There's a lot of things I didn't know. Uh, for one, she she grew up in slavery, and she had a head injury uh, at a young age, a, a very serious head injury, and for the rest of her life, she had dizzy spells, a lot of pain, a lot of visions, and she thought those were from God. Oh, and I think those kind of inspired inspired her, her to like try things she might not have otherwise. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, she was known as the Moses, you know, because right. she yep. she took out yeah. I so think seventy people, people on, yeah. on several different <clears throat> missions, yeah. and and uh, I just can't imagine the the hardships and adversity yeah. she faced, plus. Yeah. The courage it took to do what she did, oh, and repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, once is amazing, but to keep going back. Yeah. And then I didn't know this either that she actually worked for the Union Army and was a spy, and a, she was a nurse yeah. for a while, and yeah. and so I didn't yeah. know that she actually, uh, in one of the raids, freed seven hundred slaves. So you know, yeah. So she she was something. And each one of those are lives that. God sent his son. Right, right. And Harriet yeah. wasn't even her real name. That's her mother's name. But yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hopefully through this, we've inspired uh, some names that some of you all may want to look at. Uh, Bev, you could go back in American history and spend a day with a lady that... Who who would you like? And I know there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Uh, one lady I would like to spend time with is, and know what I know now, yes. is uh, Clara, Clara Barton. After having been an RN and yes. in yep. surgery for many, many years, um, I, I just can't imagine the atrocities she saw. And she helped so many, many, many men and women, you know, in the war and her efforts with the American Red Cross. Yep. And uh, uh, finding uh, the name, naming all the bodies so that their yep. families knew that their loved ones died. Yeah, I, I she, mean, there she again. She was just an amazing, amazing yeah. woman. Yeah. Clara Barton. Uh, but we're out of time. <laughs> I'm being told that we are now out of time, but I'm telling you what, ladies, I could sit here for another hour or two, and I don't think we'd run out of topics. Some of my favorite women in American history and Google some of these Del Chithi she was a, a uh, an Apache woman who endured incredible hardships at Lozen an Apache woman warrior uh, of course Clara Barton uh, Cynthia Ann Parker and her daughter uh, Prairie Flower how about the female Paul Revere 16 year old girl named Sybil Ludington rode twice as far as Paul Revere but uh, a poem wasn't written about her 
so we don't know quite as much, but you'll have to check it out. We want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to this week's very special Just for Kids Radio Roundup. Great moments in American history with our very special guests. And uh, be sure and tune in again uh, next time for another special uh, segment. We're going to be having Wayne Sales, Robert Kleiline, and also stagecoach driver, our stagecoach driver, Bill Hobbs, whose father is talking about banking, Miss Harlan. Or his grandfather started uh, helped start the bank at Hammond okay. back in the days. So, uh, along with Arkansas Bev, this is Cowboy Rick saying, "Don't forget to study your American history. Say your prayers each and every day, and uh, my doggies keep it western and always ride a fast horse." <laughs> Adios, mi amigos. <laughs>